I'm sure we've all found ourselves in scenarios where we need some sort of backup connection or whether if you're out on the go, you find yourself needing to share your connection between multiple devices. Well, today I'm here to show you the Q5 4G router. Now this is marketed as an outdoor router and no doubt there are a few scenarios where you can use this outdoor and, give, and share your 4G connection or LTE connection with multiple people. But what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to test it as a backup connection. So I have my UDM Pro set up in another room and I'm going to plug this into the WAN backup port and using the 4G connection as a backup. Alongside this, what we will also do, this does broadcast its own ID, so we'll try and connect to it and see what sort of speed tests we get. But the main thing is, I wanna see if I can use something like this as a failover device. The main thing I wanna know is, can I use this instead of the Unify LTE WAN failover? That will set you back at least $200, where this is going for on Amazon for about 50 pounds. So let's have a quick look at what comes inside the box. So if I open it up just here, you have a nice little funky keychain that you get with it. Um, I don't know if it's the, the character or you can see of that, but I'm not quite sure if that's the main character of them or however that works, I'm not sure. We have a device on how to get it set up. We have a couple of aerials. So we have what says a 4G aerial at the bottom. It says it right here. And we have another one which says Wi-Fi. You have the plug. Uh, this looks to be a PoE plug, yep. Yeah. So PoE on one side, LAN on the other. So it, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna plug this device into the PoE side and the LAN part into the WAN backup part of it. So we'll give that a go. This is the device itself. So nothing expensive. It's just a bit of plastic with a few LEDs on the side giving you some status information. We have the info on the back of it just here, which shows you um, the SSID, what the username and password is, etc., etc. So that's just here. We have some waterproofing clips by the looks of it. So actually, if I bring this back and we have a look underneath here, you can see the SIM card is just here. You can put a 12 volt power straight into here or you can use PoE using this. So these were the waterproof bits that I was talking about just here. So if you're not using them, you can pop them in there. Uh, you have a user manual and you have some more waterproofing bits um, for the bottom, I believe. And last but not least, underneath here, there is a ethernet cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all connected up and see how well it works. So I've gone ahead and plugged the LTE device into uh, this port just here. So you can see me highlighted port nine just there and port 10 is where my existing connection is. So that's going in via ethernet into the SFP plus port. Slightly diverting away from the LTE device, I'm just gonna quickly show you the configuration within Unify. Um, so you can see that port's not active. Now you need to just go to settings and internet and you create a secondary connection. That's the way it should work. However, I found a bug that it just doesn't seem to let you create the secondary connection. So quickly go to system, go to the old interface, go to settings, networks, and just create a new network. You go to WAN and you're choosing the second WAN option, which is WAN2, uh, using DHCP. And you can use it as a failover, or it does actually say weighted load balance there, but I'm not gonna go into that. It's just a failover device at the moment. And then we're gonna call this uh, WAN2. Uh, click save. And there we go, that's now created down here. So actually, if I now go back to uh, the user interface and new settings, go to Unify Devices, click on the UDM Pro, click on Settings, and now you can see that port is now active. So that's running at 100 meg. You can probably see, you can probably see why I've moved my internet connection over to the SFP Plus port because um, that can run at one gig, or by the looks of it, it can run at 10 gig, and this only is 100 meg. Um, so I'm not going to use an SFP Plus connection for a for 100 meg, that just doesn't make sense. But anyway, now that that's plugged in, if I go to the dashboard, uh, I'm just gonna delete out my WAN IP so you won't be able to see it, but that's in port 10, and that's there. And you can see WAN 2 on port 9, it's given me a 192.168.199.157. So if I quickly open a new tab and log into the gateway, this is the device itself. 
So I'll quickly show you through the device and how it works. So you can see I'm connected to the LTE O2 UK. That's my uh, I've taken a SIM card from my phone and popped it into there for the demonstration purposes. Uh, you can see there's nothing really in the home at the moment. The information uh, shows you the SSID, the IP address, the WAN IP address. You can download drivers for this. SMS, phone book, and finally the settings. So this goes through network selection, whether you want to go 4G, 3G, or 2G, um, the Ethernet settings, the Wi Fi settings. So if you want to broadcast it, change the SSID. We'll come back to this shortly when we test the internet connection on that. Uh, WPS, device settings, if you want to change the username or password. There is a firewall, so you can enable or disable it. And then there's port mapping and, and DMZ settings. Uh, router settings, which is the uh, IP address, uh, and then if you need to do a firmware update. So, just moving myself across to the other side, you can see in the bottom right we have WAN 1 and WAN 2, so they're both running. So, the second one is the LTE device, 4G device. So I'm going to run a quick speed test on there. I'm not expecting too much, maybe 10 to 15 meg. Uh, it is indoors and it is in the other room, so it's probably not going to get the best of speeds. Okay, you can see there, 8 meg, <laughs> it's not very great, uh, 8 meg down, 5 meg up. So I'm not going to go ahead and test WAN 1, I'll leave that for now. Um, so the main thing I want to do now is test the failover of, of the system. So if I go to terminal, for example, uh, and quickly open that. So if I quickly do a ping to 8.8.8.8, uh, you can see I'm approximately, my ping hovers uh, sub 20 seconds-ish. If I just move this to the side and do a quick speed test, you'll see I'm connected to Virgin Media and you'll see the speed is a lot better than 8 megabits per second. So we'll, so we'll go back to terminal quickly and what I'm going to quickly do, I'm going to step away from the desk and I'm going to pull uh, the network port um, that has currently the WAN 1 connection in it and um, we'll see what happens. And you can see right there that it's quickly dropped connection, but it's reconnected back again. And now you can see the ping to uh, Google's DNS servers now going into the 50, 45 to 50 second mark. So if I go ahead and do a speed test again, you can now see I'm back at the 8, 9, 10 meg mark roughly for the download speed. Not sure how much you can actually see of this, but I'll take a screenshot and put it on the screen. Um, you can see that it says the WAN failover has failed over basically. So the WAN connection has failed over. So what I'm going to quickly do is go ahead and plug it back in and watch it fail back. And I think it's, I think it's quite obvious there where it's failed back. It's gone down to the 20, 15 to 20 second mark, maybe a little bit more give or take. Um, and we failed back to the existing connection. So once again go back to the speed test and you can see I'm not going to run the test but you can see I'm reconnected to my Virgin Media connection. Just to show you the second part then I'm going to connect to the network, uh, the Wi-Fi, the device. So as I mentioned earlier this can be used as a backup device and it can be used outdoors so you don't have to use it indoors. It's not necessarily it's not really necessary, you just need to make sure you have some sort of power and the device will work for you using your 4G connection. Now, I'm not saying this is anywhere near an enterprise or a business solution. This is just something, if you need something at home or something basic to give you some sort of internet connection if your connection dies, this is definitely something for you. So if I go ahead now and do a quick speed test and then we're on here and we click go. And there we go, just like that, we've connected to the device and we've got ourselves an internet connection. Let me know your thoughts down in the description below about this product. Is this something you would implement at home? As I mentioned earlier, I don't think this is quite a solution for the business. However, if you wish to implement it at home like I have or take it out and about with you, if you have a power source, you can connect it up and give yourself uh, a 4G connection across multiple devices, then perhaps, you know what, this, this could be for you. The links to the products are down in the description below and if you want to support the channel in other ways, they're also down there as well. This is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.